Hello, everybody. This is uh, 13 on your side. Sports anchor, reporter Mike Lissette, and today we're going to read a sports book. Now, you kids out there, you may be hearing that LeBron James is the greatest basketball player of all time, but I'm here to tell you, as an old guy, that there was somebody before him that I think was even better, and his name was Michael Jordan. And you really talk about the greatest athletes of all time. We're going back to, like, Paradactyls and, and, and Brontosauruses and Knights and all those guys, baseball players, Michael Jordan might very well be the greatest of them all. So that's who we're going to spotlight today. The book is called Salt in His Shoes. And it was actually written by his mom, Dolores Jordan, and his sister, Roslyn, also helped him out with this. The illustrations are by Cater Nelson, and uh, the Chicago Sun-Times says it's uh, inspiring. Let's check it out, huh? Michael Jordan loved to play basketball. Every Saturday, he followed his older brothers, Larry and Ronnie, to the park, hoping they would let him play. And if one of those guys, who usually play with them, didn't show, they always did. But there was one prop. His name was Mark, and Mark was the tallest guy on the court. This is a big deal in basketball. You got to be tall. That didn't mean you only have to be tall. You got to have heart. So let's keep going. What's the matter, Mikey? Too short. Mark flapped his arms in Michael's face. Over here, shouted Larry. But when Michael threw the ball, Mark's long arms came out of nowhere and knocked the ball away. It flew into the hands of a player on Mark's team. He made the basket, and the game was over just like that. Sometimes you can't win them all, but you got to learn from defeat. And I think that's what Michael's going to do. I am really sorry, guys. If I were taller, then that wouldn't have happened. All the way home, Michael apologized, even though no one was mad at him. His older brother, Ronnie, tried to cheer him up. Look, little brother, you played good today, he said. Don't worry, we're going to win next time. When they got home, Michael went into the kitchen where Mama was cooking dinner. He was disappointed, and she could tell. You guys lost again today, huh, she said. Michael nodded. He sat quietly for a minute, then said, Mama, how can I get taller? Now, Mama knew the answer to a lot of questions, but this was a tough one. She thought for a moment as she sprinkled salt and pepper on the chicken she was making for dinner. Then she smiled, looked at Michael, and said, salt. Salt? Michael looked at his mama. Salt in your shoes. We'll put salt in your shoes and say a prayer every night. Before you know it, you're going to be taller. I don't know if this works, but let's find out. Salt in my shoes, Michael said quietly to himself. Surely Mama was teasing. He sat out of the window trying to figure out how salt was going to help him grow. He noticed the rose bushes outside in Mama's garden. They had grown high along the fence, and roses of all colors were blooming out of the vines. He thought to himself, I remember when Mama first planted those bushes. Michael's face lit up. If Mama knew how to make those roses bush grow, then maybe she's right. Maybe salt in my shoes really will help me grow. Growing very excited, Michael twirled around and started asking a lot of questions. Mama, how long will it take? And how tall do you think I'm going to get? Smiling, Mama sat next to him and explains, In order for this to work, the most important thing you have to do is be patient and listen to what I tell you. And say your prayers every night. Listening carefully, Michael shook his head. Okay, Mama, I'll be patient. But what does saying my prayers have to do? Everything, Mama replied, and she hugged him. Now wash up and tell your brothers and sisters to get ready for dinner. Michael dashed out of the kitchen, almost knocking over his father, who was walking in. What's he up to now, Daddy asked. Oh, the usual, she said, chasing a dream. Later during dinner, Mama noticed Michael was barely eating anything. He was already daydreaming about being taller. Michael, first things first. You won't grow if you don't eat, especially your vegetables, Mama said. But I'm not hungry, Michael said. Raising her eyebrows, Mama gave him a stern look. Slowly, Michael picked up his fork and began to eat. Minutes later, his plate was clean. He was asking for more. That evening at bedtime, Michael set his favorite game shoes on the floor next to the growth chart hanging on the wall. Then he put it on his pajamas, said his prayers, and jumped to bed. 
When Mama came in, Michael was fast asleep. By the look on his face, she could tell he was already playing basketball in his dreams. Standing by his bed, Mama sprinkled salt in his shoes. Then she prayed quietly over him as she did all her children. Dear God, please help Michael be the best he can be and to give him his best in all that he does. And Lord, could you please make him just a little bit taller than he is today? Thank you. Amen. After that, Michael wore his favorite game shoes everywhere he went, even to church. And he stopped going to the park with his brothers on Saturday. Instead, he came home and practiced. He wanted to grow a few more inches before he went back to the park. After two months of practicing and waiting patiently and praying, Michael stood next to the growth chart on the wall. Nothing. He hadn't grown an inch. He was disappointed, but he didn't stop believing. That's important. I've got to give it time, like Mama said, Michael thought to himself, and that's what he did. Two more months of practicing went by and still nothing. Now, Michael was becoming a little sad. Not only had he had not grown one inch, but he missed playing basketball with Ronnie and Larry. About the only thing he didn't miss was being picked on by Mark. When the next Saturday came, his brothers tried to get Michael to go with him to the park, but he would not budge. Mama had begun to worry. When she saw Michael sitting alone at the top of the steps, she said, Daddy, maybe you should go talk to him. So Daddy went out and sat with Michael. What's wrong, son? You haven't gone to the park with your brothers for a while now. Are you okay? Michael didn't say anything at first. Then he looked at Daddy and said, I thought I'd be a little taller by now. I did everything Mama told me to do, but nothing is happening. Michael, why do you want to be taller, Daddy said. If I were taller, I'd be a great player. I could help this team win, Michael answered. But you are a good player, and you already have everything it takes to be a winner, right in here, Daddy tapped Michael on his chest. Being taller may help you a little better, but not as much as practice, determination, and giving your best. Those are the things that make you a real winner. Michael thought about it, Daddy said it for a minute, then suddenly he jumped up and took off. Where are you going? Daddy yelled at him. I got a game today and I'm late, Michael yelled back. When Michael reached the park, the game had started. He sat on the bench hoping he would get a chance to play and he did. The score was tied when John, one of the guys on Michael's team, fell and hurt himself. This was Michael's chance. Michael joined his team in the huddle as they gathered on the sideline for a timeout. Okay, the game is tied. All we need is one point. Who wants to take the shot, Ronnie asked. He looked at Michael. Feeling more confident than ever, Michael said, I'll do it. I'll take that shot. When the whistle blew and the game began, Mark began to pick on Michael as usual. Still trying to play with the big boys, huh, he taunted. But Michael paid no attention to him. Taller or not, he had been practicing, and today he was determined to win. Larry threw the inbounds to Michael. Michael caught it, bounced it for a moment, and then took off running. As he approached Mark, Michael shifted to his right. Mark followed, but he was still shifting. Michael spun to the left. He stepped behind Michael and shot. The ball arced above his opponent's heads and fell silently through the hoop. Two points! Game was over. Michael's team had won. It was just as Michael had dreamed. When he realized what he had done, Michael took off running and didn't stop until he reached home. Bursting through the doors, he shouted, I did it, Daddy! I did it! I shot right over the tallest guy's head and won the game. Running in behind him, Ronnie and Larry joined the celebration. That's right, little brother. You did it. You won the game for us. Michael remembers the look that Ronnie gave him during the last time out of the game. No, we won the game, Michael said, but I was the guy that hit the shot. <laughs> they all laughed. After that day, Mama stopped putting salt in Michael's shoes. Michael did not stop being patient and working hard and praying. And that is what he became right there. A slam dunker for the Chicago Bulls. He won six NBA championships, two gold medals. He has the highest scoring average in the history of the NBA. And there you go. And, and, and he was in Space Jam 1. Now they're making Space Jam 2 with LeBron James. And you may not know who Michael Jordan is, but there's a good chance you know what Air Jordans are. He's the guy that's behind those awesome shoes that you might have or you might know somebody that has. 
So there you go, Salt in His Shoes, written by Dolores Jordan with Rosalind Jordan, illustrated by Cater Nelson, Michael Jordan in the Pursuit of a Dream. Thank you so much, guys, for letting me come out and read with you. I had a great time. I hope you guys had a great time, too. And, uh, yeah, hopefully we can do this again. See you guys later.